Hello again, and uh, welcome back to PHE 289, Soccer Officiating. Once again, remember that we're working out of this book. This is your classroom textbook. And once again, you, hopefully all of you have gotten this thing. I've noticed that we've got a few folks that have not taken some of the quizzes. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that, that's one of the things that just have, so absolutely had to happen. Uh, to rely on that at the end of the class may not be advantageous for you. And speaking of the advantage clause, what I'm dealing with this morning is this particular aspect of the rules, uh, item five, rule five, item uh, section three. Okay, during the game, what the referee is supposed to be and the officiating crew is supposed to to deal with. Generally speaking, this is a referee's uh, responsibility. But I want to make sure that you see this. Uh, in a video that uh, was prepared by the United States Soccer Federation. While it doesn't totally apply to the high school rules, certainly it, it is a very good explanation, I think, of what we do as referees when we see these kinds of situations, uh, when we see these kinds of situations materialize. And basically what I'm talking about is this kind of stuff right here. Item D, this is extremely important for you to understand only because uh, through your knowledge of this particular aspect when you get into a game and you're not going to know how to do this uh, um, initially it, it's going to take a little bit of time only insofar as you need to watch somebody do this uh, get a feel for it, you need to understand the game, you need to understand the flow of the game uh, advanced stuff, don't worry about that but this is the section of uh, Rule 5, Section 3 uh, Article 1D that will have at least two, if not three, questions in the final that you're going to have to to address. Um, please pay particular attention to this. Let's take a look at that video now. Go ahead and do that for you at this time because it's it's really good and it explains things I think from a, a very good perspective uh, from an officiating standpoint of view. Not all of these items are. Um, applicable to the high school game and I'll stop this video and show you where those are when I get a chance. Let's take a look at this. Advantage is a powerful and flexible tool that referees can use to manage competitive matches. U.S. Soccer recommends that referees apply advantage in relation to the experience, skill level, and strategic awareness of the players involved. Law 5 states that play should be allowed to continue without a whistle if the team that has committed an offense would benefit from stopping play. This benefit usually involves temporarily halting the attack, interrupting the flow of the attack, or giving opponents time to regroup or recover. The advantage concept is one of the most important principles of refereeing competitive matches. Historically, one of the conditions assumed to be required before applying advantage was that the violation of the law had to be a foul or misconduct described in Law 12. Modern practice and thinking about the advantage concept have expanded to include violations other than those in Law 12, and it is necessary that officials understand and use this clarification when refereeing at highly competitive levels. For example, in this expanded application, if an attacking player is in an offside position and involved in active play, but the goalkeeper is able to collect the ball and begin a promising counterattack, the referee can apply advantage and allow the attack to continue without stopping play for the offside offense. I'd like to go ahead and address that particular part now. While, in fact, this applies beautifully for the U.S. soccer uh, through um, USSF and FIFA rules, in the high school game, I would suggest that the level of play, as Michael correctly indicated at the very beginning of his video, probably isn't to the level where anyone would understand what you're doing. My recommendation, since we don't have a clarification on this point from the National Federation of High Schools, is basically to suggest to you, as a referee in the center of a contest, if in fact you have an offside situation, the ball's been played through, and the keeper collects and manages to maintain possession of the ball, that what you do is you allow play to continue without yelling, play on with the upswing of the arms, uh, the indicated signal for the advantage call, as identified in Rule 5, Article 3, Section 1D. Please uh, make sure you to understand that the level at which you are applying these rules, in some cases, for some high schools, is at a basic level, while in several others, or in others, not necessarily several, but anyway, in others, it may be very advanced. 
A lot of these kids play on uh, select soccer teams um, for their states. Uh, many others are just out there just to have a great deal of fun and, and see this as a recreational outlet. The two mix on a high school soccer field probably more so than in many other venues uh, that we have at the youth level. Okay, So once again, while this is a great video, this is the only part that I would have a, uh, a uh, not an objection to, but a qualification for. How's that? Let's watch the rest of the video. Note that advantage cannot be applied to any restart requirement, such as the ball having to exit the penalty area on a goal kick, because these requirements operate prior to the ball being in play. Likewise, advantage cannot be used to disregard the fact that a throw-in is taken 15 yards away from the proper location, even if an opponent gained immediate control of the ball from the restart. Despite the expanded application, there is no change in the fundamental nature or mechanics of signaling for advantage. If stopping play would help the team that committed the offense or would hurt the team that had the offense committed against them, then the referee should clearly signal and verbally proclaim, play on. Please note that as a practical matter, the advantage signal is not needed if the immediate result of applying advantage is the scoring of a goal. This expanded interpretation of advantage includes any foul or misconduct and any other violation of the law committed by a player during play. Please see the advice to referees write-up that accompanies this video for more information and examples that explain why or why not advantage would be applied according to this updated interpretation. I'd like to go ahead and, and refer that as well, uh, refer to that as well. Some of you are USSF soccer referees, uh, certified soccer, uh, soccer referees, and that's fine. I don't care what grade, uh, you know, eight, nine, seven, six, five doesn't matter. The point is, you'll have access to those uh, advice, um, uh, advice to the referees, uh, documentation, and booklets, and, and that's fine. Once again, I can't stress to you enough that the the implication is here that this is the rule for high school soccer officials. It is not. Uh, my point would be that you need to once again address all of the rules as they're written here and make sure that you understand that you're applying these rules to the high school soccer game, which as I indicated just a few moments ago can be at a variety of levels of understanding and practice and skill level. As Michael pointed out at the very beginning of this video, it needs to be applied, advantage needs to be applied to uh, this uh, to the high school game with those considerations in mind. Let's take a moment. Let me uh, bring up another uh, source of information for you, and uh, we'll, we'll get this. We'll get this. Okay. What we have before us now is the uh, field diagram as it pertains to this rule, uh, rule five, uh, with regards to the advantage clause provided in Article Three. Uh, section 1, item D. You may remember that in the initial diagram, field diagram, that I suggested to you that we would be um, dealing with a variety of things here. Let me see if I can get this thing to work. It doesn't seem to want to play with me today. Hang on just a second. I'll Okay, let's try it again. Maybe I'll get it to work. The reason I want to bring this up to you is from an officiating standpoint of view, not to mention the fact that you're going to see a couple of these things on the the final. But when you get out there and actually begin working as a high school soccer referee, either in a dual situation, more about that a little later, uh, or in a three-person crew, I want to make sure that you understand what it is that I'll be looking for as the signing secretary for regions one and two if in fact you choose to work high school soccer here in western Kentucky. Let me point this out. You may remember that in item one or uh, the first rule that I did what I could to make sure that you understood that what we did is we if you will divided the field into thirds and for our example here we have needless to say the, and I'm going to go ahead and call it the defensive third, the, obviously the middle third of the field, and then the attacking third of the field. This is kind of the way I want to go ahead and describe it. What I'd like to do with you here is 
make sure that you understand that when we talk about advantage, there's a couple of uh, big time no-nos. Let me go ahead and make sure that you understand one of them. While you'll find some philosophical differences in what it is that I'm providing for you today with regards to some of the things that may be said in other venues, other education classes about soccer officiating, this is the way I'll look at it and I'm trying to kind of keep you out of trouble if in fact you choose to call advantage in these particular areas. And what I'm getting about specifically is the 18. If in fact you provide an advantage call in the 18. What you're basically doing, at least in my book, is uh, giving the defense double jeopardy. What am I talking about? Well, as you remember in the not only the video, uh, but also in the, the material of the book, if, in fact, you call play on and provide the advantage to the attacking team in the 18, what you're telling everyone is that you've observed a foul. Everybody knows that because you've said it, and you've provided the upswing of the arms, indicating the advantage is being applied. If the advantage doesn't materialize, then you are obliged, as a referee, to call the foul back to the original spot of that foul observed and provide a direct free kick. While you may not have gotten two penalty kicks yet, that's fine, but any direct free kick violation that occurs in this area, okay, results in a kick from the mark or a penalty kick. And you have just set yourself up for a real problem. My recommendation, whenever you observe a direct free kick foul inside of the 18, keep your mouth shut, see what happens for at least a second. Delay, if you will delay if you will and then make your call accordingly in this particular case it would be a penalty kick by the way it is my opportunity now to provide you with something that I've been teaching now for a couple of years uh, so that you understand exactly where I'm coming from with this I call it believe it or not doodah okay delay observe Decide, apply. The reason I bring that to your attention is, is simple. If, in fact, you try to take yourself out of the picture for at least a second, you will see a large number of other things happening on the field of play than if, in fact, you make an instantaneous decision that may affect the game in a negative way, uh, something that you didn't anticipate. So if, in fact, you will follow this simple, very simple list of, of items before you make a decision, um, in other words, verbalize that decision, you're going to be a great deal better off. Do-da. Camp down, race to sing this song. Do-da. Do-da. If you'll remember that, I think you'll find it to be very helpful down the road. Okay, let me get rid of some of this stuff. Hang on just a second, because I'm going to do this. I'm going to take a second. Don't move. Okay, I've got my new uh, field back up. Erasing all my other lines and suggestions and recommendations. What I'd like to do at this time is, once again, point to... Let me uh, make sure that we get that done here. We can do it with this. Oops. And... I here, make sure that we get this going on. Here we go. That if in fact, and I'll go ahead and just do it this way. Okay, that if we're in the attacking third of the field, okay, so we're going this direction, okay, and we're in the attacking third of the field as we've talked about before. And uh, my line's a little scraped. What can I say? But here's my point. The middle third of the field is where you're going to find a number of fouls. I need for you to be very vigilant there. If in fact that you're the referee of record and you're working in there, and once again that you know, and I'm not going to do this very well at all, but you get the idea. The middle third is where you're going to find a number of fouls. Here, because of the 18, we have a number of people that are very, very 
um, you know, cognizant of what in the world's going on in terms of play in that area, and choose not to follow or avoid following altogether. If in fact you can uh, can do that as a player, that's exactly what you don't want to do if you're a defensive player. But let's go ahead and identify the fact that if we have a uh, a foul that occurs um, out here, and we have another attacker that is coming onto the ball from behind the ball, so he or she is not offside. Uh, the ball gets squirted out, the attacker comes onto the ball and makes a shot. You look great. It is an, an opportunity here to apply the advantage to this situation. But you have to be able to see the entire field and what's going on around you so that you can make that call and the appropriate call. Once again, remember it was skill level, uh, age appropriate, um, and, and whether or not the situation warrants it. Well, what are some more of those situations that warrant the calling of an advantage? Well, what you're going to do is try to take into consideration, while this takes a little bit of time, you're going to talk about the number of defensive players. Okay? How many players are around the attacker? You're going to take a look at the direction of the ball. Okay? Defensive players, the, the direction of the ball, you definitely want to make sure that you take into consideration the skill level, as has already been identified. Okay? The skill level, uh, you know, and the actual potential for a shot on goal. By direction, if in fact we are talking about this attacker running onto the ball, let's say, for example, he's going this direction away from the goal, certainly an advantage call can be made, and I think that would be very uh, appropriate. But what you do, we want to make sure that, in fact, we have an opportunity to score uh, before you choose not to make the call here, or I'm sorry, in this particular case, here. Uh, if there are a number of defenders in the area, and there's absolutely no way that this person's going to get a shot off. Well, in fact, you might be better off calling the DFK foul at this point as opposed to applying the advantage. Once again, a sophisticated look at the, the concept of the game, the flow of the game, and whether or not your call is warranted. So in addition to these, there's a few others, uh, item, uh, other items that you'll want to consider. Uh, before making the call, number of players, the direction of the play, the skill level of play, uh, those kinds of things before you make your your call, uh, then that you'll also want to consider before you make your call. But nevertheless, these three are critical for making that determination, apply the advantage. Do not over apply the advantage. I see an awful lot of new referees using that as an escape for making some calls. You need to do that, and you probably in the high school level need to do these calls right here in the, the attacking third of the field. Now, if some of you are freshmen, sophomores, perhaps want to get into the collegiate game, you're going to see an awful lot of uh, advantage calls that develop in the middle third of the field. I have even, in some cases, seen some referees call advantage at the higher division levels here in the defensive one-third of the field. Uh, not you and not in high school, please. Okay? Okay, hey, that's enough about the advantage. Please take an opportunity to review all your documentation before you take this quiz. I think you'll find it to be very helpful, uh, you know, as you take that quiz and want you to do well on that. Needless to say, I want you as a high school soccer referee for the fall 2013 season.